As a result of the Civil War ending in 1865, the 13th Amendment had been created, officially abolishing slavery in the United States. Unfortunately, this amendment did not resolve the issue of racism, and racist southern states still looked for legal ways to segregate blacks from society. In 1877, Jim Crow laws were created in order to legally segregate blacks from whites. These laws included the separation of public transport, schools, bathrooms, and much more. It was clear that racism was still very prevalent in the South, and something had to be done. 1954, the Supreme Court overturned Plessy v. Ferguson in the ruling of Brown v. Board of Education, proving that separate but equal could not exist and that this ruling violated the 14th Amendment and was therefore unconstitutional. Despite the fact that this case had specifically only been applied to public schools, it manifested itself into other areas of segregation, implying that any facility under segregation was not permissible. This court case ruling played a large role in sparking the civil rights movement of the late 1950s, which ultimately left black activists to take one of two paths to fight for the rights of African Americans with integration in mind or without. These two paths ideally led to the difference between peaceful protest and the use of violence in protest, each having a varying effectiveness on the civil rights movement. One of the biggest violent protests occurred in 1965, labeled the Watts Riots. The riot began as a Caucasian officer pulled over an African American brother and sister for speeding. A crowd began to assemble as the brother went to get his mother, since she had lived close to where the officer had stopped them. In fear of the large crowd, the officer called for backup. As the mother arrived, the officer became fearful that the arrest of the African American for speeding may erupt in a riot. As a result, he began to reach for his firearm. The mother of the child jumped on the officer as the crowd erupted in a large roar. The officer arrested all three family members and left the scene. The riot went on to terrorize the rest of the town. Though it had been this incident that sparked the actual riot, the motives had been poor living standards for African Americans in that area. The riot included looting to many degrees since many of the residents couldn't afford much of the food or clothes sold in that area. The riot continued on for four days, and on August 15th, when everything had subsided, the city was left in shambles. As a result of the riots, 34 people were killed, 1,032 injured, and nearly 4,000 arrested, accompanied by $40 million worth of property damage. This being said, the rebellion served to show the government the poor living standards in which these African Americans lived, and the federal government in return implemented programs addressing unemployment, education, health care, and housing. The idea that violence could bring about change and peace became very popular during the Civil Rights Movement. Malcolm X was a firm believer in this ideology. After finishing his time in prison, Malcolm X joined the Nation of Islam, a group that also believed in this ideology. While many activists preached for peace and harmony amongst black and whites, Malcolm X delivered a different message. Whites should not be trusted. He asked African Americans to be proud of their heritage and to set up strong communities without the help of white Americans. He supported the establishment of separate state for African Americans in which they could rely on themselves to provide solutions to their own problems. He believed violence was not only the answer, but violence was justified in self-defense. Blacks should achieve what was rightfully theirs by any means necessary. He also critiqued popular activist beliefs, saying, more was at stake than the civil right to sit in at a restaurant, or even to vote. The most important issues were black identity, integrity, and independence. In regards to peaceful protests, Malcolm stated, if George Washington didn't get independence for this country non-violently, and you taught me to look upon heroes, then it's time for you to realize, I have studied your books well. It seems that the Nation of Islam struggled more to strengthen black pride and independence from whites than to unify them. While Malcolm X's teachings did have a positive effect on the civil rights movement, they did also come with a negative one. While blacks became full of pride for their race and heritage, his teachings also promoted the idea of hate for whites, debatably regressing progress made to unify blacks and whites, which MLK and many other civil rights groups hoped to do. Like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr. was another activist that fought for the right of African Americans. Unlike Malcolm, MLK had a very different standpoint. MLK fought to end segregation. King believed peaceful protest was the best way to solve the issues of segregation, and was very much against the use of violent methods, unlike Malcolm. He portrayed the effectiveness of peaceful protest in the Montgomery bus boycotts of 1955, which occurred days after the jailing of Rosa Parks. Just a year later, in 1956, the federal ruling of Browder v. Gale proved that segregating buses was unconstitutional. King sparked the movement of peaceful reform, and many people on their own demonstrated ways of peaceful protest that can be attributed to his teachings. 
On February 1, 1960, sit-ins were added to the peaceful protester strategies. On this day, four African-American college students entered a restaurant and walked to a whites-only counter and asked for service. After not receiving any, the students sat and waited, despite threats and intimidation. News of the method was publicized and many others took place in these activities. Over 1,500 black demonstrators were arrested for these actions. However, progress was being made. Slowly, restaurants began abandoning their policies of segregation. One of the most impactful acts of peaceful protest on education for blacks was through the integration of Little Rock High School in Arkansas. During the summer of 1957, nine African-American students enrolled at Little Rock Central High School, which had previously been an all-white school. On their arrival to the school, they were met with a large white mob, which shouted, threw stones, and even threatened to kill the nine African-American students. Despite the fact that segregation of public schools had been legalized federally, Arkansas tried its best to keep white schools white and black schools black. 270 soldiers from the Arkansas National Guard were sent by the governor to prevent the students from entering the school. After some time, President Eisenhower sent over soldiers to individually protect the Little Rock Nine from any physical abuse targeted towards them, from any students or parents. After years of harassment and opposition, only one of the nine children graduated from Little Rock. This became an example for American public schools and led to the desegregation of many schools nationwide, despite the heavy resistance. On August 28, 1963, MLK delivered his I Have a Dream speech during the March on Washington. Between 200 to 300,000 people attended and listened as MLK demanded equal justice for all citizens under the law. The increasing agitation of the civil rights movement skyrocketed, and national public opinion was greatly swayed by his speech, resulting in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This act officially ended segregation and discrimination based on color, religion, or national origin. In the end, despite whether or not the means of protest was violent, something was accomplished. This being said, it is clear that through peaceful protests, not only were needs met, but peace, love, and unity were promoted. Peaceful protests often ended with blacks having to put up with any offenses met, therefore making a point or conveying an idea. Violent protests tended to directly oppose the offender, also making a point and conveying an idea. These protests being violent, however, meant that some group met with drawbacks or negative outcomes, though some groups were often whites. While violent riots and militant groups gained traction without the need of large martyrs, their goal ultimately led to further develop segregation and hate. In the end, in regards to promoting desegregation and equality, peaceful protests significantly were more effective than the use of violent protests. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand.